In the old days, man tried to catch a glimpse of the future in the strangest of ways. They locked themselves in dark rooms, not partaking of food and drink. At the stroke of midnight, they ventured out into the night, through the dark woods where strange creatures roamed. To see if they would be wealthy, to see if they would be happy, to see if they would live, to see if they would be loved. Interesting. Looks like it's just going to start. So, welcome to Year Walk, a game based on some element of Swedish tradition or folklore, as far as I can tell, about uh, lose. It basically involved uh, divination. This was originally a phone game, so that's my, that's why you might recognize certain elements of how it's being presented right now. Eventually, came to PC, got glowing reviews. I've wanted to check it out for a long time, but I never got around to it. It's supposed to be kind of creepy, but it's also supposed to be some kind of puzzle or adventure game. Don't know entirely what to expect, but it fits nicely into this slot after finishing room uh, the room two of these short, puzzly, strange games. Odd coincidence of them both being specifically games that came from uh, phones, specifically, actually. Go figure, huh? Oh, an encyclopedia. Ooh, we can look up all sorts of things, including the year walk itself. Ooh. I think it's pronounced Orshgang or something like that, year walk. Year walking was at its core a vision quest with the purpose of being uh the purpose being to foresee the future. There were very rigid rules concerning the year walk and not adhering to them would prove very dangerous, even fatal. How the practice of year walking came to be is shrouded in mystery. But it seems to have been a widespread practice in Sweden until the beginning of the 19th century in some rural areas as late as the beginning of the 20th century. The practice was likely over a thousand years old and most certainly pagan. The year walking varied greatly uh, regionally and even locally. There may have been differences between one village and the next. All the variations had a couple of elements in common, though. That's funny how you have to follow really specific rules, or else it'll be fatal, but also all the rules are different everywhere. Almost as if people were just making things up. A year walk could not be done on any common day. There were certain days of the year where the gate was opened, generally in liaison with important festival days such as May Day, Midsummer's Eve, or Christmas Eve, and most commonly New Year's Eve. A year walker could not partake of any of the food or drinks that were served on these days, a sacrifice of no little significance, since these feasts were some of the rare occasions when food would be plentiful and varied. A year walker had to avoid other people, so they commonly locked themselves in dark rooms and were not allowed to see a fire for the entire day. Perhaps not a vast sacrifice on Midsummer's Eve, but on cold winter days it would be uncomfortable, at least, if not hazardous. If the year walker followed these steps, he would leave these dark, uh, his dark room at the stroke of midnight. This would be his last chance to cancel the year walk. Once he ventured out, there was no turning back. The church was the final destination for a year walker. On his way, he would typically encounter a number of supernatural creatures, which would pose a, th a threat physically, mentally, and spiritually. If a year walker made it to the cemetery, he would he could he would walk around the church in an intricate pattern. This would open the year walker's eyes to the future, but it would also lure out the church grim. After having completed the year walk, the walker would see visions that could manifest themselves in different manners. But the year walker left uh, when the year walker left the cemetery, he might, for instance, see a somber procession of dancers dressed in the finest church clothes. These would be the people that would die in the following year. A reoccurring theme is, of course, the year walker who meets his own ghost on the road. Another story tells of how the walker would see newly dug graves. Love played a great part, too, so a walker would typically meet wedding processions or even attend weddings yet to come. One testimony from the late 19th century tells of a mental patient named Martin Nielsen, who described his visions as otherworldly experiences. 
Before I saw what happened next year, I lived among the stars. I lived there for many lifetimes, it seems. But do I care for next year? Or what do I care for next year? Time has already ended. Today, the practice seems to be almost entirely forgotten. Except by this video game. So I have a bunch of different entries I can take a look at if I want to. Interesting. The Yearwalk Encyclopedia is a collaborative effort between Sim Mogo and Theodore Elmston, who is the author of all the written content. Aw, there's some little stuff about Theodore there if you want to read it. Alright, we apparently can walk. Oh, that's... distressing. When there is a path leading north, press W or the up key to cross it. Okay, so I walk sideways, like strafing, basically. There's also a map. Interest. Oh. Well, that's... If things get creepy, this map's not really going to help me not think that it's not that's creepy anymore. So if I go left, it looks like I can go over here. So the whole thing is designed for side-scrolling. There's a journal. What? Okay. Apparently you sign into a journal. So if I hit right, yeah, it ends. I have to go left, judging by the map. Is it activated by M? It is not. Oh, what is that? There's an arrow up here. Is that the... That is the that 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 is how you tell that there's a path. Is this arrow shows up on the screen? Interesting. All right, up we go. And so we explore. Nothing eerie yet. Ah, the sound effects. The sound effects of just hearing vague crunching in the snow and nothing else. So there's a path over here, but I don't think I can go into it yet. I think we have to continue left for now. Oh. I can go down. That's where I came from. <laughs> Are you a puzzle box? It would seem. Interesting. It seems it may even have specifically a... Uh, like a rotary phone, basically, right? If I find out a code, maybe I can type something in. As of right now, we have nothing to go on yet. Unless it's something in my journal, specifically. My encyclopedia. Perhaps. I think I'll look up these things as we arrive at them. Because I think those, those are going to be the creatures we're probably going to encounter if the vague description at the beginning was anything to go by. So am I now on the next screen over? Yep. I think I'm probably, probably going left until I go down now. Here we go. I think this part functions as a walking tutorial to some extent. What is that? There's a sign. Is there another... Yep, another path forward. Can I even scroll back and... Yeah, I can't scroll back and forth here. So our goal is to get to this windmill, it would appear. Those sh those are all creepy, by the way. Those vague background shapes, and the game makes it's so out of focus. Like that's not that's the the, the video is that's not the video being blurry. That those distant background things are actually blurry, which is going to be really creepy if anything ever moves. Oh man, there's something suffocating about just the whiteness of it all. Well, we've arrived. There you are. I've been waiting for you all day. Do I click again? You should go outside without a hat. Uh, you should not go outside without a hat on a cold day like this. You'll freeze your ears off. And I am quite fond of the person those ears belong to. Did you see anyone? Uh, did anyone see you coming here? Now you're being silly. You know that I'm not ashamed of you. It's not that. I like you very much. But you and I come from different worlds. He is waiting for my answer. I said I'd give it to him next year. And this is the last day of this year. Oh, she gets sadder every time I talk to her. That's a bummer. Now you're just being unfair. This isn't any easier for me. I don't like it when you're like this. Calm down. You're walking. 
I hope you're joking. Do you remember what happened to my cousin, don't you? Promise me you won't do anything foolish. We are not supposed to know what happens in the future. You should hurry home to your cottage and get some rest. It's getting dark soon. Hurry home to your cottage. You should probably go. So now my goal is to go right back there? I think so, yeah. I think this was functionally a walking tutorial, which I made take extra long for no good reason. <laughs> I do wish there was a hotkey for maps, though. That wouldn't hurt. Should you find yourself lost, clues can be found in the hints menu. I don't need no stinking clues. Until, eventually, when I might need some stinking clues. We'll see. For now, I'm gonna keep going right until we get the- yeah, we need to- we need to find a code for that, I think. And there's my cottage. I think we're just listening to myself sleep right now. That slow pan was oddly unnerving. Oh. Is that saying... We got letters? Or trees and wheelbarrows? Interesting. I see. So it's the logo of the game, Year Walk. Oh. Oh, that contrast, huh? It appears to be nighttime now. And we have access to everything, huh? Okay, so where should I go first, I wonder? Just to explore in general? There's a whole bottom area that looks crazy. There's the church itself. I, everything gets highlighted. There's the windmill. There's a brook. Runestone. Woods. Dead tree. Hill. Okay. Let's walk around a little bit, see if I see anything. Hi. It's a, like a fetus-like symbol and a pitchfork or something? Mylingen. The Myling. Infanticide was a fairly common crime in Sweden during the 19th century and earlier. The two most common motives were that there was no room for another mouth to feed, or that the child had been conceived outside of wedlock. The souls of these unfortunate children became mylings. Typically, the mylings were murdered by their mothers, often unmarried women who had been left to fend for themselves. The myling would commonly be left in the woods to die, or would, or they would have been drowned by their mothers in brooks and bogs. Some mylings died at the hand of angel makers. The angel maker would typically be paid by the child's poor mother to find a decent home for the infant. When the mother left, the infant was murdered. The most common way for the myling to haunt was, to, was through a horrible wailing sound. The myling might take the form of ball of light similar to that of the Irblos, the Scandinavian will of the wisp, and lead the curious traveler astray. Sometimes they would cry for their mothers to breastfeed them, which would apparently set them free. One story from Bergslagen tells of a old farmer on his way home through the forest. He is approached by a small child who follows him and says, Grandfather, Grandfather, I am so hungry. The old man tries to ignore it, 
but the child keeps on nagging. So finally, the old man loses his patience. If you can find someone to feed you, then feed, but you won't get any milk from me. The child seems pleased and leaves. When the old man comes home, he finds his daughter lying dead on the floor, bleeding from her chest. The child he met was the spirit of his murdered grandson. A person who helped the Meyerlings find their way to the other side was often left with a gift. According to some sources, the Meyerling would be taken in by some other supernatural creatures such as Hobbes, or, if it had been drowned, the Brook Horse. But what does that mean here? It's just a symbol of a Meyerling and a pitchfork. Keep that in mind for later, I suppose. Any sounds in the background? I think I encountered a Myling in Witcher 3. Oh, look at that. Is that the next area? Yeah, it is. Anything off in this direction? Nope. Yeah, I think a Myling actually played an important role in that game. What is this hourglass looking thing? It's not one of these. I'll, I'll look at those when they when they become relevant to the, situ the current situation. Hello. So I can continue upward, or I can kind of loop back around if I go back left. There's a T here, that's curious. The, the box is labeled here, that's cool. So I, f I found that box before, and it actually shows up on the screen. We're in the woods and the underdown sto underground storage. That might... Let's take a look around, around here. I'm, I'm heading towards the church. I'm just kind of picking a goal. But I'm curious about these two things on the map, and I kind of want to take a look at them while I'm here. Okay, this one says the ho this is the brook horse now. That that's a horse in a brook. Sweden is a country of a, uh, has a lot of lakes, rivers, and streams and brooks. And Swedish folklore is filled with strange creatures residing in dark waters. The brook horse was a pale horse who lived in creeks or lakes, luring children to ride on its back. The brook horse's spine grew for every rider that it lured in on top of its back. When the brook horse was satisfied, it leaped into the water, whereupon the children drowned. The brook horse has a lot in common with the Nix, a, a handsome young fiddler who lured young girls down into the water. And according to some, they were one and the same. It's likely that the brook horse was made up of uh, made up to keep children from playing too close to the water. One of the more unusual descriptions comes from a story told in the north of Dal of Dalarna. A young man is on his way home from his work at a charcoal kiln. He decides to wash up in the nearby creek. The man finds a strange stone, formed like a small child in the water. He picks it up. The man notices that he's not alone. He is being watched by a horse walking on two legs. The horse stretches out a human hand to the man who gets frightened and runs home to a shack he shares with his fellow workers. He tells the tale to his comrades who laugh at him and call him a drunken fool. He shows them the stone that now looks quite ordinary. The man curses and goes to bed. When the co-workers wake up the following morning, they find the man dead in his bed, his lungs filled with water and the stone nowhere to be seen. The brook horse was almost always closely associated with death. Not always in a negative way. For, inst for instance, uh, it, in the sad folk tale, Lily Niles... The brook horse is the one who finally leads Little Niles' soul home, and thus ends his long series of misfortunes. Makes sense, since we would also associate the brook... There's an axe here. We'd also associate the brook horse with the previous story of this, the the drowned children. The ones that, uh... That's creepy. By which I'm talking about the children who, uh... Were killed by the, their own mothers. So can I come back with a light or something? Because I can't see anything inside there at all. Okay. Let's continue heading to the, towards the church. I have, for some reason, decided that, that is my destination. So we'll check that out. Nothing creepy's happened yet. Okay, maybe not. Maybe that's not the most accurate way of saying, Oh, it's 3D! Um...
Okay. This is what I get for saying things out loud. I wonder what something creepy is going to happen. Here's a nightmare doll. Enjoy. Does that re Is that the Huldra? It's got the two spot the two points on its head. No legs. Seems like the Huldra. Maybe not. We'll go with it anyway. The Huldra is known to have played a part in Norse mythology, but she is likely of an even older origin from when man lived off the forest rather than the fields. The Huldra is a garden of the forest. She tended to the trees, plants, and animals. A single large tree in a grove surrounded by smaller trees was often considered to be the Huldra's home, or even the Huldra herself. In most stories, she's presented herself as a beautiful young woman. This was, however, not her real appearance. Very few saw the Holdra's true face, and even fewer lived to speak of it. She was often described as a lonely and woe-filled creature. Her relationship with humans was very complex. She could enthrall a man with her beautiful song and lure him deeper and deeper into the forest, where she either wedded or killed him. The men kissed by the Holdra became apathetic and slow. According to some accounts, the Holdra was a positive force, if a hunter was kind to the Holdra, she might blow her breath down the barrel of his rifle, which would bless his haunt, his hunt. Colliders, uh, colliers considered her their friend, as she kept fires from spreading from their charcoal kiln. She also helped those who willingly offered her, her, their blood to her, but this was dangerous, as the Holdra might drink the giver dry. The Holdra was thus capable of doing both good and bad deeds. It was very hard to predict whether she would help or harm, since she played by her by rules unknown only to her. Oh goody. Oh goody. That's, we actually covered four of them already. Here I thought I'd ra be rushing them out a little bit. Ah, the creepy part went away. Okay. Left, right. She, wait, is it just alternating? Left, right, left. Right, I think it's just alternating. It's just a weird doll. No, left, right, left, right, right, right. Left. Left. Left, right, left, right, 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 left, left, I think was the answer. Huh. Hello, you creepy little bastard. I wonder if that comes up here, like... Left... Right... I mean, that's just going back and forth a lot, right? Left, right, left, right, right... Right? Left, left, maybe? Or that? That could- it could refer to an action to do in a specific location, perhaps. Let's keep going to the church. Anything I don't understand, I will figure out how to understand it sooner or later, at the very least. Okay, oh. It looks like a, like a goat emblem. It's the way to continue. Yep. Is that a well? Yep. Ah. Okay, now we have some structure here. I'm trying to get to the church, and there's a key I need to get into the church. And it would appear that the Holdra, right? That sure seems to fit the bill. Seems the Holdra has the key, or holds some element of the clues on how to get to the, the key. We know the Holdra has something to do with large trees, right? I believe that's what we said here. A single large tree in a grove surrounded by smaller trees. So that's probably it. The dead tree? Maybe? That's just the woods. Wood outskirts. 
Yeah, the woods are all over the place, but that spe this place specifically seems like it'd be it, because it seems to specifically have a really big tree there. So, we've got a little structure now to, what, to our goals. Let's check that out. And trying to get murdered by any weird surprises. I don't even know if you can take damage or get attacked in this game necessarily. I think it might be just a, mostly an exploration game. I'm trying to go up. That would go down. Oh! There is not a connective tissue over there. I can't go up. There's no road. I'll try going down then. Hello? Why is that one glowing? Oh. Not quite, huh? Am I helping? Oh my goodness, it keeps going, huh? Um, K. I've definitely done that wrong, but it seems similar to something I saw elsewhere. It was an hourglass shape, right? Let's go check. I'm gonna wanna go up from here. Somewhere over here, there was like an hourglass shaped thing I saw, right? So maybe that's the secret here. Oh. So I think I wanna go down and then left. There we go. That seems like what I'm trying to draw back there, right? So, create an hourglass on the top part and, and ho ho ver vertical lines on the other part. It's a minor gripe, but uh, being a ga being a game made for phones, I definitely wish that there was a, just a hotkey for opening the map. Maybe there is one, but it's definitely not M. So right now I'm just kind of hovering over the map icon at the bo uh, all the way over there. Because it's a little hard. I don't have the, my uh, layout set up yet. Okay, so. Or we do vertical, hourglass, down. What have I done? The top's glowing now. The symbol I drew is on the top. But there's three eyes, so maybe I need to find three different symbols and put them in there, one by one. Maybe that's one part of the three-part puzzle. Are there other... I did it here. Oh yeah, there's an eye archway. There's one over here. And... I don't see one else. That oh, one up here, in the hill. Connected over here to the wooden, wooden underground. Alright, well I'm in the right place where if I want to go left I can find my way to there. Can I go right over here? Oh! Hi! I was looking for you, come to think of it. You leaving? Should I click on you, or is that a bad idea? Clicking definitely is not the answer. I guess I'll follow her and just hope things don't go really terribly for me. As she, like, eats my face off or something. Hi. This is so oddly serene, <laughs> and peaceful, and creepy at the same time. Oh, maybe I'll gain access to that one tree now. Yeah, should probably open up a new path. Okay. The world's opening up. Oh. That's the two owls.
not sure I want to be here. Where's the map think I am? Oh, we're in. Uh huh. Is that progress or failure? The sound makes it feel like I'm looping poorly. So maybe not there? That's a good sound. So left two. Failure. Left two. Nope. This is this is a time consuming one. Two, three, two, four. We gotcha, I think. Oh, okay, no, uh, it's fine. Uh, okay, thanks. Thanks. Feeling great today. Nice to meet you, too. Whew. Thanks, Sweden. Oh, cool, drank my blood. And I got- I got the key, so there's that. But also, uh And it turned into water, because of course it did. Alright. I will now assume that I have that. Yeah. I didn't like that at all. I didn't like that at all. I'm gonna go for the other symbol, just because I've- I'm already on this thought process, so let's try to finish the symbols if I can. Am I on the big long one now? Yep. There's a brook around here where we'll find said horse, probably. Let's go to the symbol first. Okay. Sort of a slanty line, then a black widow a bit. Bow tie. Thankfully, we're nice and close by. Okay, so... Two down, one to go. This is for the goat head? Is that another one of these? That's... That's Kirko Grimmin. The Church Grim. Oh, that's gonna be what's drawn out if you do this thing, right? The Church Grim. Look at that. He's holding a heart, isn't he? Of all the creatures in Swedish folklore, the Church Grim was doubtlessly the most complex and certainly the most feared. Little is known of it, since it was considered bad luck to even speak about it. The Church Grim's appearance varied, which could possibly be attributed to the nature of the Church Grim's origin. When a church was built in medieval times, an animal was sometimes buried alive under the floors. Most commonly goats, since these were comparatively cheap. There have also been stories of criminals being burned, uh, buried alive as punishment. In other versions, the criminal's heart was cut out and placed inside an animal carcass that was sacrificed. The heart was central to many of the myths surrounding the Grimm. Stories from the south of Sweden told if you could touch the Church Grimm's heart, you could stare into the eye of creation. The Church Grimm guarded the church against thieves and grave robbers, but because of it, uh, but because of it, even honest folks avoided the church at night. Some stories say that if you were unlucky enough to be the last one to die during the year, you would serve the church grim the following year. There are other stories that suggest the church grim was not a guardian at all, but rather a sort of parasite that was drawn to the energy of the church. While there it fed on people's hopes, dreams, and fears, a recent and controversial theory suggests that the church grim was closely related to a nameless Bronze Age deity. We still have the Night Raven. I'll hold off onto that until it comes becomes in any way relevant. Try not to try not to mass read everything at once. So I want to go up there, but I don't know how. 
I would presume that I need some kind of light source, right? Because in order to get up there, I need to go into the storehouse. But I went into the storehouse and I couldn't see anything. And the line's connected there. So there must be a tunnel from the storehouse to the last one of these. So I could keep exploring. And maybe I will. 